I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here and those watching on TV. Hope everybody got to enjoy some sunshine today. As far as marriage report, I really, uh, most important thing is want everybody to be aware that uh, we will have a vigil from our officers tomorrow evening at seven o'clock at the city uh, riverfront. Would appreciate anybody that can make it. Uh, it's been a year already which is, uh, doesn't seem possible, but we'd like to play, pay tribute. Also, for those that might be interested, at 6 p.m. on Thursday at Rosebud, they're going to have a another, uh, I guess we call it a vigil, they're gonna walk from the city hall to the uh, cemetery, I believe. So if you would like to attend that one, you're more than welcome to also. So anyway, that's all I really have. We'll go to city administrator. Okay. Um, I was talking about uh, with you at the last meeting about our um, our auditing situation, um, where we had to go out for bids again, kind of unexpectedly. So uh, today was the deadline for the proposals to be submitted, and we did get two. So I'm very relieved about that. So um, myself and Tammy Ellis will be reviewing those proposals and be getting back to you um, on a recommendation at our next meeting. Um, also, the the chamber strategic planning event. Uh, that I'd also discussed with you that five representatives from the city attended. It was a really, it was a really nice event. Um, and the chamber will be reviewing the results and discussing um, next steps at their uh, meeting this Thursday. Um, and I'll be there to participate in that. Um, on that note, um, our comprehensive plan, uh, MRPC has submitted um, a contract for our review and we'll need to work with um, PNZ on determining um, a start date. Um, when we start, one of the first things that we do is a very similar type of planning session um, like the Chamber did. I don't think it's an all-day event. I think it's a series of smaller uh, workshops throughout the course of um, 18 months, but there's a big kickoff public workshop to start it. So, you know, we'll have to work on uh, what is a good timing for that. Um, speaking of MRPC, they have on their agenda this Thursday evening to discuss um, housing. You know, I, I always say, you know, we're it, that housing issue is not um, just relegated to the Herman area by any means. Uh, housing constraints are an issue everywhere because, you know, the, the interest rates, the uh, material costs, things like that. So they are just, um, and thankfully we have a couple things moving um, and maybe a couple waiting in the wings, which is exciting. But anyway, they uh, are hearing a lot from their, their all the cities and their MRPC and they want to just um, kind of have a brainstorming session and we see what the needs are, what other people are doing, sharing strategies and things like that. So I will be happily report back to you on um, what comes out of that meeting. Um, porch. Uh, also talked about that last time. Uh, have more information. So the foundation repair folks don't want to, they can't deal with the far right pillar column. Um, we have to hire a general contractor um, to, to deal with the column. It needs to be all the cement blocks, those were not on the original plans, those got put in there at some other time. But they're crumbled and they don't want to, they don't want to touch it. So we have to get that shored up. Um, they suggest pouring concrete in there, tying it to the rest of the footings. But while they're doing that, they're going to have to hold up the roof. I think I was talking to you about that. Um, so we have to have a general contractor deal with that pillar and then either before or after, anyway, the, then the foundation people can uh, put the piers in after the third column is correct, corrected. But then they can at any time do the other two um, columns in the front and get those peered. So anyway, it's becoming 
kind of a cumbersome process, but that's the latest and greatest information I have. I'll be getting a bid from the, um, the foundation repair people in a couple weeks, and then Mike Fleege is trying to help me solicit a local contractor to deal with that third column. Um, yeah, so kind of a necessity, but it's been protracted. <laughs> I think that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. We have no public comments. <clears throat> old business. Anybody have any old business? Under old business, uh, a while back we, we talked about you know, big trash days coming up. And uh, the last couple times we've had an issue with, with uh, I guess the biggest issue is people bringing trash from out of the city limits and putting it on somebody else's yard and so forth. Tri-County is not happy with the situation. We're yeah, trying to. Uh, but Jim showed us some photos. We need we need to come up with a a plan, I guess. You know, it, it, it's it's something we offer, and it's for our citizens, not for people that don't live here. I don't know how this is some of the problems I had last time, and I'm not really sure how we address the issue. We don't want to discontinue it. One of the recommendations was. Well, just have them take all the bulky stuff out to try a county and, uh, you know, just dump it there. <clears throat> the problem is some of our elderly residents don't have means to do that. They don't have pickup trucks or they don't have anybody that can do that. So that's putting a big burden on, on those type of uh, households. So if anybody has any recommendations, we got just a little bit of time. It's what... Uh, it's the first May, weekend. first weekend. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a lot of time, but think about it and uh, you can come up with some ideas. <coughs> talk amongst yourself and. Uh, so, just a little bit more context, if I could. Yes, sure. Um, so, last time Dennis Ingeman and I uh, spoke about this, um, <clears throat> he wanted to make sure that we knew um, or that, you know, this is built in, the labor for it, Tri County's labor is built into our contract. However, the city pays the tipping fee on each load. And when they do this large trash pickup all in one day, they have to take the trash to Washington instead of Martinsburg because they have to make a quick turnaround to get back to get that all picked up by noon. So they're taking it to Washington, who is much more expensive. And they literally doubled their rates last year. Um, it went from $80 per ton to $160 per ton. Um, so, I mean, we're not talking huge money. So last fall, when that doubled fee was in effect, it cost us um, $2,236. So it's not huge money, um, but he did want us to be mindful of that uh, tipping fee. Um, if we did it, um, one of Dennis's suggestions were, he said recycling center, um, one of our guys suggested actually the Gutenberg parking lot if we were going to do a drop off type of thing. Um, so then if they, um, the drop off, the theory there is that it would prevent people from out of town people from abusing it because they'd have to bring some sort of proof of residency like a utility bill or something. Um, you know, that would just, <coughs> It would be hard to get people in the habit of doing that, but it kind of is what it is. I mean, the city wouldn't be open that day, so we couldn't like print them off a copy or anything. So hopefully, people would be prepared. I know that's the way Owensville does it, um, and some other city cities do it both ways. You know, um, like Bland, they do a curb pickup, but they have a limit of two large items. Not sure how you enforce that exactly, but that's what they do. <coughs> so. Um, like there's pros and cons definitely to both. He said if we did the drop off, they would supply at least um, one guy to man it, and then it'd be good to have at least one city employee there as well. So like I said, it's it's a, a nice service for the citizens to get curb pickup, but you know, like so many things, the abuse of a few sometimes um, make you change things. Um, that I don't know. I, I, I could go either way on it, really. I, like I said, there's pros and cons to both. There's a lot, there's a lot of like 
building stuff. Like this one picture looks like cabinets and insulation or something. And if they don't pick up building material. Now, you They're know, not supposed to pick up materials. building material. <clears throat> um, so some things they do leave and then they sit on the curb for a long time. <laughs> anyway, think about it. And think of any solutions? If, if we're thinking about it, we need to think about it like fast. By well, that's what I'm next saying, meeting, next yeah. meeting, by next meeting. So I'll bring it up again then. Any new business? If not, we'll move to ordinances. The first uh, ordinance on for tonight is Bill Number 2024-19 for first reading. An ordinance to authorize a zoning reclassification for property at 111 Franklin Street, Herman, Missouri. From R1 single family residential to C1 general commercial. Any questions on this discussion? If not, do we have a motion to uh, approve? Is there any reason to I'll move to approve bill number 2024 19. It's first read. Motion made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Um, if we get this read twice, we might be able to get it to um, the engineer to get on our new map. All right. Would you read that a second time? Time out. In order for an ordinance to be passed, it has to be passed by a majority of the board of aldermen, and so two yes votes don't do it. With, and so with Jim gone, and with an abstention. Yeah, he abstained. Yeah, right. But do you really need to abstain? Usually you abstain when it affects you monetarily. It's my company, or the company I work for, but... But it's a rezone application. I mean, what do you think? Um, what's going on with... So you asked if we could read it twice. Do you know, is there some sort of no, no, time? No, I mean, it's, we, we'll work it out. We don't have to read it twice. Because I would say if Derek's most comfortable abstaining, then let him do that and then read it twice at the next meeting. That's fine. Okay. You demand. <laughs> uh, and then next is bill number 2024-20, an ordinance to approve a contract by and between the city of Herman, Missouri and CM Archer Group PC for engineering services for sidewalk and parking lot projects. Okay, so that is, it's really loud. Someone's <laughs> using the hot water on that way. The hot water? Oh, the there's not really any. The hot water down there. Oh, okay. Any okay. okay. discussion on this one? <clears throat> if not, do I have a motion to approve? I move to a bill. Wow. I move to approve bill 2024-20. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second on February. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carry it. That one need to be? We need to do that one again. Bill number 2024-20 for second reading. An ordinance to approve a contract by and between the City of Herman, Missouri and CM Archer Group PC for engineering services for sidewalk and parking lot projects. Do I have a motion to approve second reading? I'll move to approve bill number 2024-20 as second read. Motion has been made to have a second. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We will move on to motion. Do I have a motion to approve our minutes from the last meeting? I move to approve the board minutes from February 26, 2024. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. <clears throat> Invoices for payment. A motion to pay the bills. I move that we pay the bills. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Reappoint Chad Walton to the Tourism Commission. I move to approve Chad. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? I'll second that Chad Walton gets another job. Motion is made. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Hire Lisa Klingschmidt, Paulette Jackson, and Sharon Liefer as part-time tourism service assistants. This is for the train station. Yeah. Approved. 
I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion to make a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Vehicle for hire license renewal for lift you up rides. Debbie Vanessaw. Do I have a motion to approve that? I move to approve Debbie's application. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Good. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Conditional use permit renewals for the following owner unoccupied guest houses. Dawn and Greg Libert Helming House at 112 West 1st Street, Barton Chris Totem Tateman Parkview Guest House at 1221 Washington Street, Steve Vummer to Florian Stone Cottage at 214 West 4th Street, Arminius Holdings LLC to Florian Brick Cottage at 218 West 4th Street, Arminius Holdings LLC to Florian Bicentennial Inn at 223 West 4th Street. Motion to approve the renewals. Move approve. Motion is made to have a second. I'll second. Motion is made to second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Conditional use permit renewals for outdoor liquor consumption for Fernway Distilling Company, Andrew Lease, number four, Schiller, and 10 Mill Restaurant, Jim Deerberg, 315 East 1st Street. That aye. motion to approve. I move to approve. Motion made. Do I have a second? I will second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. We have no reports. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Charge <coughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Trish, I'm just curious, do we have, does the city own a, uh, like a flatbed trailer?